Hey guys, this is a continuation of my previous video called A Virtual Night in the Woods. Um, and this is option A. So this is assuming you ordered the Gilded Gilgamesh in the previous video. So the printer says, oh, of course, a Gilded Gilgamesh. I'll get you one right away. And he offers you one completely from the tavern. Now, the bartender then informs you that this is a land of knights and tells you that the entire local area is haunted by dragons. Or not haunted, but infested by dragons. And they bother the local castles and the townspeople with um, their general presence in the area. So the man tells you, okay, I have a, an idea for you. You can help me by helping the princess in the nearby castle um, achieve something by getting the dragon to stop bothering her from one of the nearby caves. So after having gi given you this drink, Printer says, okay, I'll let you in on a little secret. Nearby here um, is a place where um, you can meet the other townspeople, the, the other people, uh, but first I want to give you an option. If you choose to accept this quest, I'll give you one item you can bring with you to the cave to challenge the dragon. I'm not going to tell you what it is right off the top of my head at first, but I want you to first tell me what your intentions are with the dragon. Now let's say you're new to this area, but let's say, well, I'm going to tell you this. You're probably not aware of how to fight a dragon. And in this book, the idea, or this living storybook, the idea is you can't just fight a dragon. You can't just go in there with a sword and expect to win. The dragon can outpower uh, you or overnumber you or outnumber you or overpower you. But either way, you won't be able to fare too well against the dragon if you don't know what to do. So that have been said, your options do not include a sword. Your options do not include anything else, like a bow and arrow. All right off the bat. Unless, of course, you pursue further down the storyline and you knew something about something. So, Bartender says, okay, I'll let you in on one secret. And that's that I'll give you um, the first option um, to, well, to challenge the dragon. And that's that you can use a bow and arrow. Now, if you want to use a bow and arrow, you, you can't use a typical bow and arrow, which is what I was getting at. You have to use something special. That's that you have to use the special tipped... It's not really a bow and arrow, it's a crossbow. You can only use a special dipped, tipped crossbow dipped in this special enchanted powder that only shoots a special arrow. So, if you want, I'm making this all, all this stuff off, off the cuff of my head, by the way, so bear with me. I'm not reciting this from anywhere else, it's not plagiarism, so there. Um, you have to uh, get this arrow and use it in your quest, but the only way to do it is by getting a tome, a special book from somewhere hidden back in the woods where you came from, and bring it back and brew it along with a special potion to get the exact area you need to conquer the dragon. And the only way you can beat the dragon is by shooting the dragon directly in the head. In the temple, I'll say. So that's the only way you can defeat this dragon. Now, um, that having been said, the townspeople do not usually bother the dragon, and no one has really ever successfully challenged the dragon. Um, so... Uh, if you would like to pursue this quest, you'd have to go back into the woods, into the forest, and I'll tell you what you need to get and how you need to get it in order to complete this quest. So, having had chosen to accept it by drinking the drink, you are not drafted into beating the dragon, otherwise you can't really visit the village. So, just say, let's just say the bartender then tells you this, and you say, okay, great, cool, I'll go challenge the dragon and help the townspeople and the princess to finish this quest of stopping this nosy bothersome dragon from annoying the village any further. So great. Um, the idea now is the bartender is um, giving you the ideals of this quest laid out to you. So the bartender says, great. Okay, so here's the first thing you need to do. You need to go back in the forest and you need to gather mushrooms. That's the first thing you'll need. The second thing is you have to find a certain kind of bat hidden in the woods. The third thing you'll need is to go to a lake at a certain time of twilight and find this magical fairy sprite and or spirit that only uh, only in shadows and or haunts the lake at a certain time of night. Now, if you can do that, you can get all three things. You can mix them together in a cauldron or a pot, as I was going to say, because I don't use terms that apply to witches because I'm not a witch. But you could mix them in a cauldron. We'll say a leaky cauldron because I'm thinking of Harry Potter now. And now and I'm realizing that there's male witches. or male. <laughs> there's wizards too, so it's not only a feminine thing. So I'll just stop thinking about that. But you can go mix these things in a cauldron. And you can make yourself this magical thing, or I'll just say in a pot, <laughs> you can use to um, enchant the arrows you need to shoot the dragon um, in the temple in order to complete the quest. You say, great. First of all, where do I get a cauldron? And second of all, how can I go into the woods and find these things if I don't know where to start? The guy says, great. First of all, I have a cauldron here. You can use it. 
So, deal. Second thing is, in order to go into the woods, you have to do three things. You keep three things in mind. First of all is, you need to go not deep into the woods, but only um, at a certain part of night. Um, but anyway, you should note this, and that's regardless of when you go, it's going to be very dark. Because this area of the forest is known as a forbidden forest, and it's always very dark at night. Uh, or it's always very dark there, seemingly as though it's the pitch black of night. Um, the second thing, um, if you have to recall, is a certain kind of bat. This kind of bat only lives really high up in the trees. In order to find it, you have to use a certain kind of whistle to attract the bat. If you can catch this bat, you have to get a certain kind of oil from its skin. That's what you have to use. And the third thing is, you have to find this mystical spring. And there is hidden deep uh, into the forest in a special part, and it's in a clearing. So if you can go there, you can find this magical sprite, which appears only around twilight. Um, but oh, Sorry, not twilight. Um, the opposite of twilight, early in the morning. Then you can get this um, magical spirit essence from the air in, a, in the form of mist, and you can put it into your potion. So, having had accepted the quest, you decide to set off for the forest to complete the three tasks. So, the first task you need to accomplish is to go into the deep forest and find these special mushrooms. So you head off into the forest. As you pursue further and further down this path, or we'll say as to this, you proceed back down the first path you initially followed the townsperson to from that point where he met you in that first initial clearing, but you proceed deeper this time, uh, but in a different direction. You proceed to the left now instead of off to the right. And you go further and further into the woods and as you go deeper and deeper, you notice the trees get thicker and thicker, and they seem closer together. Until the point where it seems like they're almost touching. But as you push past through this part, you eventually come to a different kind of clearing. Um, it's very dark, and there's no fog there so much, but you hear crickets in the background. It's very, it's very dimly lit. You can just barely see. And there's the faintest glow of just, like, um, bioluminescent um, life there. So you can just barely see what's going on. As you go into this clearing... Um, you go outside into the forest, and um, you can. Well, I'm scary. You just fell. You can see uh, um, some mushrooms in the very, very back. So as you push your way back, you see. Um, well, I'll say this: as you, as you first enter the clearing, the first thing that catches your eyes is a bioluminescent light in the background, and you can just barely see the mushrooms. As you go in further. You start to notice that all around the outside of the tree lines and all around you are mushrooms surrounding the outside of the clearing. So as you go in, you remember what the innkeeper had said, you go back and you pick some of the mushrooms, but you just shake out the spores. So having collected those spores uh, in your trusty little satchel, you proceed back to um, the tavern clearing area once again to regroup and get your bearings so you can go hunt the bats. So anyway, having had completed that first part of the quest, you got the spores, and then proceeded back to the clearing, where you um, were then um, able to review that list that the innkeeper that you made after the innkeeper told you what you needed to get, and then proceeded to make in your mind a mental course of action plan for how to get the oil from the bat. Now, then completed that, you're back in the clearing, and you need to find a way to find these rare animals in the forest. So, you decided to pre proceed towards a different part of the forest. This part of the forest is said to be enchanted. But like enchanted by mystical magical animals so as you proceed to this area of the forest you start to notice certain things um, in the forest a few of the things you notice as you proceed in this part of the woods are a horse which looks vaguely like a unicorn but not quite um, you can't quite make out the silhouette of its of its of a horn on its head but you can notice a very specific presence about it as though it has some kind of majestic kind of sparkle to it it makes it kind of stand out from other animals also, are mystical squirrels that you notice. They kind of seem to scurry and scamper with a kind of brightness that you don't notice in other animals. Now, as you enter this area, you start to look around. And at the, as uh, you enter the forest and you don't see anything at first, finally, something, or initially, no, not immediately, but, um, well, not initially, sorry, but immediately something does catch your eye. And it's up in the trees. It's a bat. Um, having had seen it, you immediately grab your whistle or reach for your whistle as the innkeeper had given you and you blow it. So having had done this, the um, bat immediately drops down uh, from its height in a, loud, in a slow, graceful swoop and lands gracefully at your feet and gently falls asleep. So having had done this and seen this, you immediately go to its wings and rub them 
um, in order to retrieve the oil from its skin. So when you've done this, you collect some of it on a piece of paper um, in order to keep as a sample. And then you um, proceed back to the innkeeper, having gotten a generous uh, two swabs from the bat. Now, the last part of this is the spring. So when you've all, done all these in the evening, you return back to the inn and um, await the following morning so you can go out and search for the magical, uh, mystical spring. So the next morning, um, after sun, sunset and um, a brief rest at the inn, um, you have a nice relaxing night, and as that night ends, or uh, whatever, uh, the morning arrives. And in that morning, you wake up in order to head out for the magical spring. So after um, the ma that night ends, as I said, and the next morning, you head out. So you go back to the woods and the forest, and you set off on the course for the spring just the way the innkeeper had laid out for you. So, uh, when you're ready to use the spring, you don't see much, um, but it's a nice stroll through the woods. So you get to enjoy yourself, and you get to kind of feel um, nice and peaceful as you walk through the woods. Imagine that, walking through the woods on your way to the spring, and just feeling nice. So, that. But anyway, as you arrive at the spring, um, you see a nice, mystical, beautiful morning air it's it's very cool it's very damp on uh, the atmosphere and as you see the spring it just makes you feel very refreshed something about it just makes your skin feel even younger just the very first glance so as you walk up and approach the spring um, you see a very mystical uh, figure hovering over the spring it looks very much like that one pokemon that looks like a female dancer i don't know but anyway it's hovering right over the spring so as you walk up um, you feel uh, very intrigued. You don't feel scared. You feel very drawn to it, but in a very dangerous way. Because much like the sirens of the ocean, um, certain animals and spirits can um, entrap uh, lost wanderers into being um, ensnared by their mystical, mysterious ways. So you proceed with caution, and you, um, as soon as um, you start to catch something, you immediately cover your eyes and look away. And um, it manage, you manage to just barely evade uh, being ensnared by this um, mythical being. And you eventually, um, just by the grace of it, manage to catch just enough mist in a sponge, which you can wring out into a bottle in order to uh, complete the quest and then head back to the innkeeper. So, having done that, you completed the third part of the task. So, you head back to the innkeeper and mix all three together into a potion uh, once you arrive there. So, the innkeeper is very impressed. He said, great, not many people have been able to do this before. I'm very impressed. It's great for you. So you, can, you do all these things, and you um, mix the potion up, and afterwards he says, okay, I'll give you one arrow, and it's a short one, it's a bolt. So you have to dip um, this into the mystical potion, and you have to load it into this crossbow, and then you can head out and challenge the dragon. So you do this task, and you dip the bolts into this mystical potion, and as soon as you do, you see it kind of um, change color and light up in like a weird way, where you feel like it's just about to ignite into a spark, but it's not. It's strange. It's like you can almost sense it. Anyway, uh, you proceed to the cave um, where the innkeeper says uh, the dragon resides, where legend has it that the um, entity or whatever resides. And as you approach, um, you can kind of feel an interesting thing. It's like a mystery kind of lingering in the atmosphere uh, around the cave. So as you approach, um, nothing much really happens except that you feel start to wonder, you have a decision, I'll say that. You start to wonder yourself if you want to do it or not. So you have that choice as you approach the cave whether you want to go in or not. And let's just say you do. So as you go into the cave, this is a moral dilemma. Do you really want to bother this animal or would you, do you want to complete the task? And that's up to you. But let's just say hypothetically you decide to go in. Or let's just say hypothetically you didn't decide to go in. Then you can just return to your life and not worry about it. But in the answer already laid out, you already did decide to, so that's that. But anyway, you walk into the cave, and as you go deeper and deeper, uh, you notice it's very dark. Um, so much in the cave, except that things are just very much um, the way they are. So um, you don't see anything out of the ordinary, you don't see anything strange or peculiar, but something about the atmosphere just seems peculiar. So you keep walking back deeper and deeper, and the atmosphere in the cave starts to get kind of stiff, I'll say. Um, things seem to hang kind of more in the atmosphere, not stale, not in a bad way, just kind of as though you're approaching somewhere that's like kind of a, a, ho a dwelling, I'll say, or a home. So, eventually as you reach the back of the cave, 
you um, uh, finally encounter um, well you encounter um, some um, you encounter what seems to be um, some kind of like bedding uh, on the ground and upon looking up you notice that there is a giant dragon there so just like the innkeeper had said um, you encounter this beast and just like you had uh, pr practiced you load up the bolts on the crossbow and as you go to aim it uh, the dragon um, you stop for a second and you think wait a minute do I really want to kill this animal? This animal seems so friendly. And the dragon looks up at you with these very kind eyes. You start to think back to what the dragon told you said. The dragon kind of bothers the residents because it's very different and it's not a human. So the people kind of look down on it. But you think about this, you think, wait, maybe it's not the best thing to kill an animal just for being different. Maybe it's not right. Maybe it's not justified to try to rid the kingdom of this beast just because they don't like it because it's not one of them. So as you think through these things, a lot of things start to pop through your mind and you start to think, you know, maybe I won't shoot it um, to kill it. Maybe I'll just shoot it um, to incapacitate it or something like that. So that in mind, um, you load up the crossbow and you shoot it and it hits it right in the back's spine, right above one of the notches in its spine. And um, as it does this, it kind of like twitches and recoils. And um, in that process, it kind of hits the nervous system, that special bolt and it sends a special magical impulse to the brains of the to the brain of the dragon which uh, and that, which causes a magical change in the mind of the dragon so after after having had done this the dragon suddenly becomes very different and it becomes very peaceful and very friendly and it even uh, begins to look very um, approachable i'll say as far as an, as far as any animal could go if it were ever to exist but anyway um, you, having had done this, feel much better. You, go, you know, I spare this animal. I feel much better about myself. I feel much better about the kingdom. I'm glad this animal gets to live, and I don't think it's going to be bothering anyone anymore because it seems to be much friendlier, but more happy and more content and more peaceably, peaceably, peacefully, peaceably, peaceably being itself, being it. So, you completed this task, and you return back to the end. He said, don't worry, Keeper, that dragon will never bother another person ever again. Glad you helped the kingdom and save the princess. And for that, I give you one reward, and it's this: um, one golden galleon. And by that, I mean not one golden piece from Harry Potter, but one actual ship made of gold. So, congratulations, my traveler! You've completed your quest, and your reward is a golden ship, which you can use to sail through your mind. So, that being said, I hope you like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because some things hang in the sky. Uh, not like stars, but anyway, those could be ships. So enjoy your golden ship. I hope you enjoyed sailing it through your own minds. I hope you enjoyed going on your own little mental quest. Now, with that being said, peace, take care, and I hope you enjoyed your virtual quest in the forest. So I'm Henry. Have a nice day.